Hey, sorry, that's not in my mouth. La 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 la. Sorry about that. Yeah. La 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 not as healthy as you, sir. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, yes, brother. I thought I had scheduled for my Facebook, and it's not showing up, but it should be. Let me see. Uh, I, I see we're on YouTube already. <laughs> we're streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah we are. I, I sent you the link. I, sometimes I start at the last minute. My apologies, but that's good. Still good timing. <clears throat> and uh, if people wonder why, I just let them know. If you ever wonder why... If there's a week he's not on, that's because things are happening with me. I tried to get him on last week. Things happened. And then uh, I couldn't get him on Tuesday because uh, he knows behind the scenes. <clears throat> uh, some of you know not to sound like a sob story. But I had to rent a car on Thursday, so I had to get a ride. And that took all day. And then I had to drop off the car on Tuesday, and I had to walk. 14 miles back from my destination. Did you know that, Lloyd? 14 miles. That's what happened. It's life, Lloyd. Sorry, right, brother, but about problem, that. like I said, it'll be weekly. But if uh, guys, if it doesn't happen, that's because something's going on with me because I want him here every week. So my apologies. But we're into a great topic. He's going to show you why atheism is from the pit of hell. Would you say just as bad as Islam or worse? Unpa. Maybe worse. Okay. So there you go. So may the Holy Spirit bless our brother, fill you, fill us, magnify Jesus Christ. The floor is yours. I'm here to facilitate. I like what this guy said. Did you see this right here? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. This is going to be probably different to what people expect. Okay, I'll just share my screen and we'll dive right in. How's that, Sam? Oh, yeah, you left. haven't seen the slides. I've been working on them. This is an updated version of a talk I've given before some, some time ago. Um, I've done a lot of additional work, and um, there's a lot more to atheism than we realize. And so the standard atheist narrative is completely false. So let me, uh, let me start. Let me just ju jump in. Okay. The series is called Atheism or Death, and Sam, I will share the slides with you so that you can review them and, and use them yourself. And we're going to talk about the atheist cult of reason because atheism, modern atheism, literally started as a cult, and it was called the cult of reason. It was a religious cult. And yeah, we'll, we'll talk about its earlier history, but we're going to uh, talk about its history of socialism, of violence, and subversion, and also it's very close connections to Satanism and to the occult. <clears throat> so, okay, starting off with Carl Sagan. Now, Carl Sagan, he's friends, and when you read about him, they all profess, or they all state, and he professed that he was an agnostic. However, for all intents and purposes, he was an atheist. He spoke like an atheist. He argued like an atheist. So from what I've read of him, he may as well have been an atheist. I think many people just claim to be agnostic because they don't want to deal with the stress of being called an atheist for whatever reason in their culture, in their company, they, you know, it's something difficult to deal with. So for social reasons, he says an atheist is someone who is certain that God does not exist. So he clearly has never heard the modern atheist definition of atheism. Someone who has compelling evidence against the existence of God. I know of no such compelling evidence. Now, this is where atheists jump out and say, Carl Sagan is not my scholar. Right, because they say, no, 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 no. An atheist can make up his own gender. We don't follow the dictionary. Right? Sorry, his own definition. My bad. It's it's oh, it's the same thing. Right? And he says here, God can be relegated to remote times and places and to ultimate causes. We would have to know a great deal more about the universe than we do know to be sure that no such God exists. So <clears throat> I would call on this at least that may maybe atheists are jumping the gun a little too quickly here, but yeah, I've had I've had atheists say that I'm lying about this, that I am the this is a false quote that, uh, and the whole usual Islamic not my scholar thing, right? But understand, 
I just thought I'd, I'd start with this to annoy people. Right now, socialist atheism is a political religion. You cannot separate atheism from socialism. Socialism is a precursor, a requirement for socialism. Atheism is a precursor, a requirement for socialism, and the two are integrated. So the claims I'm going to make, and we're going to back this up through the series, socialism is a socio-political religion. It is a theocracy. It is a simulacrum of Christianity. Secular humanism is an atheist religious doctrine. It is a simulacrum of Christianity. It is, in other words, a copy of, it's a fake imitation, a cheap Chinese knockoff of Christianity. Atheism is religious and it is inherently socialist and theocratic. Atheism and humanism are religions as per the US Supreme Court. Atheists went to the Supreme Court to argue that they are a religion and the Supreme Court agreed. <clears throat> so atheists spent a lot of time and money to be formally recognized as a religion. So when atheist, when the village atheist, um, which rhymes with village idiot, <laughs> claims that atheism is not a religion, I refer you to the US Supreme Court and the atheists who insisted, these highly educated atheist organizations with their money and their lawyers, they insisted they are a religion. And of course, now we're gonna hear they're not real atheists. Any comments, Sam, before I continue? So this is all documented, because this is news to me that <clears throat> atheists yes. petitioned the US Supreme Court. Now atheism is recognized as a religion. As a religion. Yes, we'll get into all this. Okay. Sorry? That's all I want to know because this is documented because this is news to me. It's the first time I knew this and uh, because the atheists won't tell you, but you got the documentation. Glory no, there's God. a reason. So, so there's th this series could be, man, could easily be nine or 10 shows, right? On different topics B because they had to realize afterwards they made a mistake because now the law would apply to them and they could not proselytize because atheism is a proselytizing religion like Islam. The problem is now that this put the same restrictions on Christianity that have now been imposed by through lawfare on Christian doctrine in, the, in in public places and schools and so on. So they had to deny being a religion so that they could claim that they are just pushing secular beliefs as opposed to, yeah. And that is true, Keo, that, that is 100% correct. Atheism and secular humanism are historically violent and irrational. Oh, I see a violent and irrationality. Sorry, I just changed that. So let, let me fix my little typo there. Okay, violent and irrational. Yeah, I changed that sentence, so that's why that changes. They're violent and irrational. Atheism and humanism are proselytizing religions like Islam. Atheism in government is invariably totalitarian and genocidal. So a picture can express a thousand words. So here's 2,000 words on atheism, and we're going to go through this presentation, and we're going to show you exactly why. Right. <clears throat> so we'll start with modern atheism's roots. We go back about to the beginning of the 1700s, to the, roughly the mid-1700s, especially in France during the Enlightenment. And we're going to learn a great deal about that. This is a man called Diderot. He is an atheist philosopher. He wrote a lot about how to create social change, etc., etc. He wrote what was called the, he was one of the contributors to the Encyclo Encyclopedia, which was a new encyclopedia of science. Science was replacing religion. This whole superstition was being, was being replaced with this new idea, this new ideology of scientism, which atheism is obviously part of. And he wrote that, now don't forget, the enlightenment is something atheists always appeal to as the age of reason, the age of rationality, and they appeal to all of these enlightenment figures, these enlightenment philosophers. And we're gonna see just how racist and debauched, depraved and satanic these people all were and psychopathic too. So atheism in Diderot and de Alembert's Encyclopédie is the opinion of those who deny the existence of a God in the world. The simple ignorance of God does not constitute atheism. To be charged with the odious, the dirty title of atheism, one must have the notion of God and reject it. Right, so this is where modern atheism starts. Right now, atheists will make all sorts of wonderful claims for their past. We'll get into all of that. But this is where modern atheism starts. It is to know there's a God and deny it. You can't simply have a, well, you, you can't simply have a uh, little feelings that there's no God. But anyway, we'll move on. We'll discuss all that. With Voltaire, 
So with Voltaire, he advocated the destruction of religion. He once stated that he wanted to live long enough to see the lost king strangled by the entrails of the lost priest, implying he wanted to see the monarchy and Christianity violently destroyed. Pre-enlightenment science did not exist as a motivator to push people to atheism. Back then, science was in its infancy, providing evidence that less academic factors were at play. Atheism is propagandized as intellectual, and in the future I will go through this history, I will go in detail through the history. Historically, it is linked to political and social factors, and it's a reaction to the establishment of the time. Basically, it is a belief that is in opposition to the status quo. It is always in opposition. Think about it. What is the opposite of theism? The opposite of theism is atheism. So atheism is not a default position. It is a reaction to theism. So Sam, your thoughts before I continue. So <clears throat> this quote that you just showed, <clears throat> and I'll try not to interject as much, strangled by the entrails of the last priest. So that tells you that atheism is intentionally violent and wants to not only eradicate religion, but people that believe it, huh? So it's just it like... It is revolutionary, spot. yes, like it is jihadist, oh, yes, it is. Okay. Yes, correct. All right. just want people to see that when atheists tell you they just want to be free of religion. No, they want to eradicate people with their religion, not just religion. Watch this. Right, so no, atheism was not founded upon the slaying of God by the sword of reason, which is the image they tried to evoke. It was simply rebellion against church and state with the intent to establish a new utopian state with a new man in the image of man, not God. All right. So now Diderot, without going into too much detail on his history, he went, he got into financial trouble. He sold his library and it was bought, okay, by the monarch, the Empress Catherine the Great of Russia. She was a fan of his work. With her patronage, her money, Diderot completed his philosophical program, and because he had the leisure to stay with her for two years or whatever, and he was able to add a dimension of political radicalism. And he traveled to St. Petersburg. He was there 773 to 1774. And with the money that he earned, he was able to enter into a leisurely retirement in Paris where he continued to write. So he was a real champagne socialist. He wanted to kill the monarchy, except when they wanted to give him a lot of money. Then it was convenient. Right? Right. So that's the divorce. So that's the definition of atheism. It is an active rejection, an active denial of God. It's not simply this patently stupid lack of belief. We'll discuss that in the future. So atheism is the cult of reason. During the French Revolution, reason referred to a belief in rationality, science, and the rejection, the active rejection of traditional religious beliefs and practices. But not only that, active rejection of the current structures of the world the way the world was structured. So the cult of reason emerged during the French Revolution, seeking to replace Christianity with a new religion, a religion based on reason and rationality as they find these words. <coughs> Bradley, wow. Yeah, that's, that's quite a journey. So the cult of reason was founded in 1793 as part of the de-Christianization movement, which was a government program was led by radical revolutionaries who believed that traditional religions of Europe were oppressive and irrational. And the way that they were going to get rid of traditional religion was by murdering all of the religious people. And a new religion based on reason and rationality was needed to replace them. So the cult was based on the principles of enlightenment philosophy, which emphasized reason and rationality in human affairs, and the cult's leaders believed that reason was the key to unlocking the potential of humanity to make men gods, creating a more just and equitable society, socialism. Now, this aligns, and we will find out, this aligns with both socialism, we're looking at Marx, Lenin, Stalin, Mao, Pol Pot, as well as Satanism. This aligns perfectly. Atheism and Satanism are perfectly compatible. And we're going to be having a look at that as we go. And the cult of reason believed that reason was the only legitimate basis for both morality and ethics, that traditional religious beliefs and practices were irrational and superstitious. The members all rejected a supernatural god and they worshipped the goddess of reason. In other words, they worshipped Isis, the Egyptian pagan deity, who was the goddess of reason. And this was personification of the cult's values and beliefs. So, okay, you can put, stop me anytime, Sam. You can interrupt anytime. So, 
Although this cult of reason was very short-lived, it had a huge impact on the course of the French Revolution and the development of modern secularism, atheism, and also what we now call scientific socialism. So now we'll talk about a guy called Plutarch. Plutarch is a philosopher, Greek philosopher. So the atheist French government recycled old ideas of primitive religion that they acquired from Plutarch. He was the most read philosopher amongst the Enlightenment thinkers and the people in the French Revolution. So they took these old primitive pagan ideas and they refashioned them into the new state religious cults. They started two cults. One was the cult of reason and the other was the cult of the supreme being. They were enlightened because they were based upon nature and reason, not special revelation from God. That's what they believed. Because now one of the things that they realized was they couldn't simply leave a vacuum of belief. They needed to have something that gave people something to believe in, structures. They couldn't simply remove the old supports from society. They had to, So they had to develop religions that mimicked religions, provided these social functions religion provided, but were not Christian. Now, let's have a look at Plutarch. This is an interesting book by Alan Brown. It's 60 pages, will cost you $5 on Amazon. And it's How Socialist Was National Socialism. And he explains how national socialism, national communism was communism. That's just Marx had his version of communism. And Mussolini had his version of communism or socialism. And the you know this guy had his version of socialism. But he says, but Gray utilizes Plutarch to great effect, and the Greeks' words could easily read like a description of Nazi Germany. So the most famous philosopher of the French Revolution atheists and of these Enlightenment atheists that atheists appealed to sounds like a Nazi. So he, the leader, trained his fellow citizens to have neither the wish nor the ability to live for themselves. But like bees, they were to make themselves always integral parts of the whole community socialist. Clustering around, clustering around their main leader, almost beside themselves with enthusiasm and noble ambition, and to belong wholly to their country. So they had to worship the dear leader. These are the beliefs of Plutarch. This is what he believes a perfect state is like. Gray's point is that in ancient Sparta, the individual was completely subordinated to the general ends of the community. And such subordination is of the very essence of socialism. So Plutarch was effectively a socialist, could be classed with the Nazis. Your thoughts, Sam, before I go on? So <clears throat> we can blame the Greeks for all these problems. You darn Greeks. Islam yes, was we can go way back to the Greeks. Right? Sorry? Islam, Kalam, was influenced by Greeks, Aristotle, and so on. And now we see socialism influenced by Greeks. <clears throat> what problem <clears throat> hasn't been the result of you Greeks? You Greeks have been the problem of the world, Ortho Christos. Just want you to keep that in mind. Yeah, Kiyo says very correctly, everything within the state, nothing outside the state, nothing against the state. Very, very true. That is that is correct. I believe that's a statement by Mussolini. Um, so yes, every man was implanted with the conviction that he belonged not to himself, but to the state. So do you see the ideas that these French Enlightenment thinkers were, were taking? Were ideas that are not what we would call enlightened at all. Right now, this is called minor marriage in early Islamic law. We covered this a week or so ago. Revisionist notions assert that typical Roman marriages took place for girls above the age of 18. Numerous studies detail prepubescent marriages of Roman girls and their early consummation. <clears throat> the Greek Plutarch assumed the cultural phenomenon of child marriage to lie in the Roman desire for an unformed character and an untouched body. So now they not only appealed, of course, just to Greeks, but also to Roman philosophers you know, because they felt that that was the ideal state. Now, of course, if you want to embrace Rome, then you're going to have to embrace this kind of kitty fiddling as well. I right. See. Just to let you know, but Plutarch features here as well. And this, so this is the kind of appeal that we're making to this kind of, this era. This is what they wanted to bring back. Now we'll mention an atheist occult enlightenment. So I need to put a few pieces on the table as I usually do, and then I'll start tying those pieces together. Well, the French revolutionaries or you can call them for the French jihadis, nature was a way to legitimize their policies and laws, equated with the rule of law during the mythical golden age. The leaders of the revolution repackaged pre-Christian religious traditions as a new rational and natural religious system for the French Republic. Remember, this is the very first atheist republic, where atheism has become the state religion. 
And in fact, Christianity is outlawed. It's illegal and you will be killed. And in fact, they become, they, they start the world's first modern genocide and they become the first police state because atheism is so rational. So these laws, so religious system of the French Republic, stripping off the superstition of the church and returning man to a mythical golden age guided by general revelation. So by man's brilliance, <clears throat> this is man worshiping himself. <laughs> right, thanks, thanks, Author Christos. So these state religions married paganism to the then in vogue, quote unquote, natural philosophy, proclaiming the new syncretic belief as rational. The French thinkers turned to their personal libraries to gain insight into what primitive religion looked like. So the French revolutionaries, the enlightenment thinkers, studied pagan religion, primitive religion. So they took elements from long defunct religions and heretical practices, then proclaimed that the state's authority came from nature herself, not the Judeo-Christian God, the church, or the monarchy. Uh, any thoughts, Sam, before I go on? <clears throat> it's, it's becoming quite obvious, the satanic roots of atheism in that its goal is to eradicate Christianity. Isn't that a common feature of all these religions like Islam? Yes. Which shows you that it's satanic at its very core. It is of the devil because their goal is eradicate Christianity. What a coincidence. But Yes. Now we're going to have, we, one of the sources I'm using here is John V. Fleming, The Dark Side of the Enlightenment. It's called Wizards, Alchemists, and Spiritual Seekers in the Age of Reason. You must understand that the French Revolution, they speak of reason, and then like they speak of reason, what they do forget to mention is that these, these people were all occultists, and we've been digging into some of that. All of these people were occultists, Satanists, you name it. I mean, you'll see that you'll see the, the clues are all there. John Fleming's book discusses Rosicrucianism along with alchemy and other occult experiences in England and Germany, with some discussions of the French experience. Enlightenment philosophers throughout Europe nurtured the flame of occultism. Enlightenment philosophers were occultists and through practices such as Freemasonry, they enabled the fire to flare up again. So these, these philosophers that atheists worship today were occultists. Your will be done versus God's will. Now, atheists will say religion and all these things, like Greeks, a sprinkle of Romans, but this, <laughs> they, the French and Germans really did turbocharge this cult. They did. Now, it's all just superstition. That's what you basically hear atheists say. This is all just superstition. But that is a Marxist position. That is a Leninist position. In fact, that's a heretical position as well. But, but basically, atheists are in perfect alignment with Marx, Lenin, Mao, Pol Pot on that point, that that's all superstition because they believe that history has a purpose, that man has to evolve, and that religion was a superstition that must be abandoned for the new science of humanity which Marx is going to bring you, Lenin is going to bring you, the French Revolution, and we're going to see the atrocities, the barbarity that they descended into. It's far worse than people realize. So now this idea that it's all superstition overlooks very important distinctions. The occult is distinct from a religion in fundamental ways. Marx was a Satanist, Abdul Nasi. Marx actually wrote satanic poems. He actually wrote poems. He, he was very fond of, of the idea of satanic practices. He wrote shall we say, in fond ways about Satan, as, as did Engels. You'll find this in their writings. So, yeah. All of these people were involved in some ways in the occult or influenced by the occult. So religion tries to understand the world. The occult, you try to exert control over the world. I know that they try to say, oh, religions just try to control you. Well, no, you're trying to understand the world. With the occult, you're trying to master the world. You're trying to exert control over it through spells. But right? Christianity is logos. God is logos. We do not reject science or reason. The occult embraces irrationality and immorality. Christian religion is based on belief in God. We pray for guidance, but the occult, they use rituals to cast spells or curses. Christianity requires spiritual growth. Occultism seeks power to manipulate by means of rituals. And God is Logos, once again, occult practitioners believe in forces that are beyond reason. Again, when I've spoken of the Sufis in the past, they believe in going to mental, doing these rituals that take them into these states that are beyond reason. They call them post-rational or pre-rational states, <clears throat> right? 
So an occultist usually operate in secret. There's nothing secret within Christian practice. Let me continue. I just wanted to throw that in there just to put some, some basic ideas out. So now we're going to look at Jonathan Israel, very well-known, very famous historian. He said the radical enlightenment cannot be simply equated with atheism. So in other words, not only equated with atheism. And he says he had the radical enlightenment. Effectively, there were two enlightenments. Religious people played an important part in the radical enlightenment, as they did in the French Revolution, but they were always Unitarians or Socinians of some kind. Oh, I, I love that part. Guys, did you catch it? These radical enlightenment Satanists, they were Unitarians. They outright <laughs> reject the deity of Christ, and they assume he is merely a human. And if you guys don't know what Socinians are, you find them today. They go under different <clears throat> disguises. One <clears throat> disguise is Christadelphians. Carl, <clears throat> uh, Carlo Xavier and his father-in-law, Anthony Buzzard, they are Socinians. Did you catch it? So it's a rejection of the Trinity and the deity of Christ, <clears throat> masked under being enlightened. Good. Yeah, so the Socinians were an anti-Trinitarian movement originating in 16th century Poland. Now, <laughs> this Polish connection is so odd because it actually came from Italy. An Italian guy that settled in Poland, that started it here. And then when they claim, oh, the Polish did, no, no, an Italian did. And, it's, and Italy is another story. That, that, that period in Italy, that's another long story. At its peak in the 17th century, the movement was influential throughout much of Central and Eastern Europe, including Transylvania, Hungary, and the Netherlands, England, France, and Germany. Remember, I also mentioned how the Sultan of, of um, the Ottoman Sultan was actually funding and supplying help to the Protestants. And... What happened was in that period, in that part of the world, in Eastern and Central and Eastern Europe, what you had was the Ottomans were, were helping the Protestants, right, to fight. They were actually assisting them, giving them money, offering them troops, and so on, to fight against the Catholic Church. But also, the Protestants created tolerance. And in, with this tolerance, they said, well, now, now we can form our own religions away from the Catholic Church. And one of the first things they did was they created the Unitarian Church and a bunch of heresies. And Unitarianism anti-Trinitarian Unitarianism was accepted as a valid religion. Now, I think most of us would look at that and go, that, that's a heresy, that's wrong. But it was one of the official religions within that area. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, so we can thank, literally thank the, the, the Reformation for the development of this particular heresy and so, for, the, for allowing it. Yes? <clears throat> I want to comment on this because people are going to think that we're being anti-Protestant. We No, that's not it. Facts are facts. Facts do not care for your feelings. Did you just hear, again, another fruit of the Reformation? So Sinianism, Christadelphianism, is the fruit of the Reformation, where every man with his own Bible becomes his own pope. This is the fruit of Martin Luther and the Reformers like John Calvin. Keep that in mind. These are facts. Facts don't care about your feelings. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. So the core beliefs of Socinians were rooted in the concept of Unitarianism, the belief in one God. And anything that's in green generally has to do with Islam, okay? If I have it in green, it links to Islam. So the belief in one God without the Trinitarian doctrine. Socinianism, like Islam, believes there is only one God who is the sole creator. That Jesus was an important prophet, but he's not divine and he's not part of the Trinity. Both are monotheist. Yet Socinianism and Islam reject the doctrine of original sin, as does the Enlightenment. You want to add anything there, Sam? Or, uh... I just want people to see that you're not being anti-Protestant and bashing. You're just stating facts, and the facts are there. Anyone can investigate. You didn't make this up. This is from primary sources. And the sad reality is that because of the fruit of the Reformation, you see... All this sprung forth from the Reformation, even what he's talking about, the Enlightenment, the post-Enlightenment, atheism, occultism, Socinism. I'm sorry to say this, folks. This is all connected to the rotten fruit of the Reformation, and I'm sure you would agree with me on that point. It opened the door to all of these things. Yeah. So I'll continue. So, for instance, this is Jonathan Israel, the Radical Enlightenment, and he says... The Radical Enlightenment rejected all compromise with the past. It sought to sweep away existing structures entirely. 
aiming for a complete elimination of quote unquote well Christian religious authority. I'm inserting the word Christian here, but but this is what is meant, right? Suleiman the, yeah, the Magnificent funded the Protestants at the early stages, correct. And I, I discussed that the last time we did the show. <clears throat> I showed that connection. I showed the, the actual deep ties between between the Muslims and uh, yeah, and the things that were happening. So there's a lot there that, that is very uncomfortable. If you're a Protestant, like I am, I'm a Protestant, it is very uncomfortable to look at these facts. So understand the radical enlightenment is now, today in 2023, coming to fruition. Men can now be pregnant. I mean, today I was very gratified to see an 85-year-old woman got up from her seat and she gave a pregnant man her seat on the bus. I thought that was beautiful. But that was beautiful, Sam. You actually, did that, that happened? No. <laughs> this is Poland. People are not out of their freaking minds. <laughs> so, so understand, they sought to sweep away all structures, not just the church, but everything had to go. They needed to burn the whole system down and start fresh with this new crazy idea that they had. All right. So now let's have a look. This look at the kind of artwork that these guys produced. It's very religious in nature, but it's very Greek as well. And you might notice this very familiar looking salute here. Look familiar, Sam? Hey, where where did we see that before? I don't I don't know. I don't know. But it looks very nasty. It looks very nasty. Very, very na nats, na nasty. Oh. Very. I, to do with Nazism or even. Good, good. Right. So let's continue. So Plutarch was the most frequently read author by men during the French Revolution. And a very famous painter and also someone who signed a lot of death warrants called Jacques Louis David. His work, such as The Oath of the Rati, you've just seen the painting. It became the official artistic style of the revolutionary government and eventually shaped the religious aesthetics of the state's secular cults, religious aesthetics of the atheist cults. Fascinating. These same names of these people in the French Revolution are associated with occult mysticism, with magic, Rosicrucians, Freemasons, etc. Freemasonry was a pseudo-religious practice that was much like the experience of Christianity. Freemasonry lodges allowed different social strata to interact promoting skepticism and intellectual inquiry. These two are both propagandistic words. I'm not going to get into this now, but the word skepticism, there's an interesting history there. It doesn't mean what you think it means. The famous Neuf Soir Lodge in Paris had members such as Voltaire, the Abyssia, and the designer of the Republican calendar, Charles Gilbert Rom. We'll discuss that in a minute. And a cultist, Antoine Côte de Gabelline. And the Freemasonry lodges were catalysts in the years preceding the revolution, and the Scottish Rite Freemasonry gained popularity in Catholic France during the 18th century. So we taught touching on Freemasonry. So this is Marat, Jean-Paul Marat. He was a martyr for the revolution. His death, his assassination kicked off the reign of terror and created the first atheist police state. So the first atheist state became the first atheist police state. Freemason, <coughs> Freemason, I need to, need to point that out. Jean-Paul Marat wanted heads to roll. From September 1793 to July 94, roughly 2,000 people monthly were publicly beheaded in Riyadh, sorry, Paris, mainly for their unwillingness to support the atheist jihad. Sorry, the atheist revolution. How, how am I mixing these words? He was an Sorry. And so an anti-Christian eulogy was given by the atheist Marquis de Sade. Now the word, he's the, his name is the source of the word sadism, the word sadist. Wow. And Marquis de Sade was an atheist and he compared Marat to Jesus Christ. Amongst other things, what they wrote was, a heart of Jesus, a heart of Marat. Their Jesus was but a false prophet, but Marat is a God. Long live the heart of Marat, like Jesus Marat detested nobles, detested priests, the rich, the scoundrels. Like Jesus, he led a poor and frugal life. Wow. This and was also, a, what they, sorry, go on. Sorry. So he's now deifying the Jean Paul Marat. Yes. My goodness, man, what blasphemy. Go ahead, brother. I just shocked me, these quotes. This was standard practice. This was these were atheists. Don't forget. But but don't worry, Sam. A, just like Islam is a religion of peace, so you can so you can show your address to people online now live. No problem. Okay. Um, I live on number one, two, three, Bakalaka Daka Street. 
<laughs> okay, just so you guys know. By the same token, um, you know, atheism is just a lack of belief. It doesn't have any, it doesn't write anything. It doesn't make any ideas, it's just a lack of belief. Another thing to note is that he was, what they did was they arranged his body, you know, they put him on a chair, like on a throne, and they arranged his body to make him look regal so that they, you know, you know the way when you see psychopaths in the movies, they always arrange the bodies, they murder someone and they arrange the body in an artistic rendition. These psychopaths in the French Revolution did that a lot. They did a lot of taking these bodies and arranging them in very macabre situations. So yeah, that's Maral, and it's made to look like he was Jesus here, basically. This whole <clears throat> the Marquis de Sade and induced abortion. Now, this is from the National Library of Medicine, from the National Institutes of Health, and it's the National Center for Biotechnology Information. In 1795, the Marquis de Sade published his book, Le Philosophique dans le, de, le Boudoir, in which he proposed the use of induced abortion for social reasons and as a means of population control. It is from this time that medical and social acceptance of abortion can be dated. Previously, the subject had been discussed in public, in had not been discussed in public in modern times, because we don't want to see that an atheist and a sadist, the, the originator of the word sadism, had been the guy calling for abortion and population control. It was largely due to Desaad's writing that induced abortion received the impetus which resulted in its subsequent spread in Western society. Desaad held that all life was cheap. He held all life cheaply and spent most of his life attacking God and the Christian church. His book attacks established religion, morality, family ties, and social structures. And he advocates sodomy, incest, lust, and cruelty for its own sake. So he viewed that man is not responsible for his own existence and God, blah, blah. Anyway, he just, he just went against everything, everything religious. The realistic view, according to Desaad, was that since murder is such a trivial matter, destruction of an infant which has not achieved the age of reason is of small consequence. Now, here he's not talking about babies in the womb, right? Outside. Because don't forget, with the Romans, before a child was two, the father could terminate that child. They could kill that child with no penalty from the state because that child under the age of two was considered to have not been developed. He hasn't developed a conscience, hasn't developed any kind of soul or reasoning. He's just an animal, an insect. Kill him, move on. And this is what they wanted to go back to. This is this is an atheist. This Atheists need to own this. And that's what we're seeing today. In fact, maybe <clears throat> you can confirm. I forgot the name. Even Planned Parenthood was started by a woman and she deliberately targeted the black community because she wanted to bring the yes. black community down and reduce their numbers <laughs> from what I was Social saying. control. Yes. Yep. It was all the same. So, you see where it comes from? It comes from this. Are we about to learn that he wasn't a true Muslim? Sorry, he wasn't a real atheist. Uh, we're going to learn that any any moment now, you know? So, oopsie. Oh, did I just make a wrong mistake again? I forgot to fade away the... Forgive me. I need to... Um, let me just, you know, I'm just going to take it away for a moment because I forgot to remove this. Okay, let me just go back. Okay, so in 1795, the atheist Marquis de Sade published his book, and he said that all life is cheap, and he attacked the Christian church, right? He then advocated sodomy and incest, right, and lust and cruelty for its own sake, and this is what he said. Okay, so this comes from, there's the link, pubmed.ncbi.nlm. Just look for the article, Marquis de Sade and Induced Abortion. So you'll see that this is a legitimate article. I'm not making this up. Okay. And if you look for some of the photos that were drawn by some of the books he wrote, I mean, man, it's all just sexual perversion. It's crazy. Now let's have a look at woke. Let's look at the origin of woke. And let's look at these fantastic Greeks that these atheists now appeal to. Why do they want all these famous Greeks? They appeal to them. Let's look at Aristophanes, who was a Greek playwright. We're going to Athens in the year 392 BC. The great urban Dionysia, when Aristophanes presented his comedy called Ecclesia Zeuse, or The Congress Women. So he depicts a teaching that was very fashionable in Athens at the time, right? And these are, these are the people that are, that are lauded by these atheists as the great thinkers, the great reasoners of, of Greece, and we want to go back to them. And this is where the French Revolution went. <clears throat> so the great Dionysia is also called City Dionysia. It's an ancient dramatic festival in which tragedy, comedy, and satirical, this is satire, right? But he was making fun of real things. 
where this drama originated. It was held in Athens in March in honor of Dionysus, the god of wine. Okay, so the Congress women. The women of the city, wearing beards and dressed in men's clothing, come to the assembly and by a majority vote pass a resolution transferring all power in the state to women. Would that sound a little bit like feminazism? Most definitely. And there's a picture, a woman with a beard, huh? Yeah, yeah. That, I just thought I'd add this in there. And then also, the, you know, like the French revolutionaries, uh, one of them at least wanted everyone to wear the same clothing. Mm. I don't know where he got that idea. Hmm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, all you know it's all converging again to one common source, isn't it? It's all connected. Yep, they, yep. The women use this power to introduce a series of political measures. And these are expounded in a dialogue between Praxagora, the leader of the women, and her husband, Bleparos. Here are some quotations. Praxagora, compulsory, universal, community, property. In other words, everybody owns everyone else's property. The people own the property. This is what I propose to propose. Across the board, economic equality to fill those fissures that scar our society's face. No more division between rich and poor. Does this sound familiar, Sam? <laughs> Yeah, but it's, isn't it ironic that the elite want to stay rich and make us poor and collapse the middle class, even though here it says no rich and poor. So it's all a lie. Yep. They stay in power and, while they subjugate us. That's what it is. Yep, of course. We will wear the same clothes. We will share the same food. My initial move will be to communalize the land and money and all property. And he says, but what about the landless man who is invisibly wealthy because he hides his money his gold in his pockets. What about him? And his wife says he will deposit all of his money in the fund. She doesn't explain how they're going to get him to give up his money and just put it in the public fund, but everybody's going to get everybody's money, right? I will knock out the walls. I will remodel the city into one big happy household where all can come and go as they choose. In other words, no borders, no, no borders, none of that border stuff. I'm pooling the women. I'm creating a public hoard for the use of every man who wishes to take them to bed and make babies. <laughs> right. And who's going to work the land and produce the food? And she says, the slaves. So this, this leaves you just one function. When shades of night draw on, slip sleekly down to dinner. The state is not going to stint. We're not going to be cheap. The state's hand is full and open. Its heart is large. It'll stuff its menfolk free of charge, then issue them torches when dinner's done and send them out to hunt for fun. Now, this last quote is very reminiscent of Karl Marx. And Karl Marx had a very special affection towards his father, with whom he read Voltaire and Rousseau. And Voltaire and Rousseau shared very similar ideas to what we've just seen. Woke and socialism goes all the way back to pagan Greece. These Enlightenment thinkers went all the way back to pagan Greece. So, yes, Sam, we can trace all of this back to pagan Greece. These are pagan ideas that the atheists have embraced and said, this is reason, this is rationality. You know, here's what's a contradiction. She says that the slaves will work the land, but I thought we're all going to be one and equal. There's no division, but obviously... Don't confuse me with the fact, Sam. Exactly. This, this is going to hurt my brain. So, and even in this system, you still have humans who will be subjugated. So much for we're all the same. All right. Yeah, do you understand? This is irrational. As I said, they embrace irrationality. They, they embrace contradiction. They, they, for them, there is no contradiction. There is... It's whatever they decide is rational, is rational. It's not Logos, it's anti-Logos. So, atheism's anti-enlightenment. Now, this is William Kilpatrick's Christianity, Islam, and Atheism, the struggle for the soul of the West. It's helpful to think in terms of two enlightenments. The enlightenment that was nourished. <laughs> yeah, everyone's a slave, of course. Yes, everyone will be a slave, yeah. Um, yeah, this philosophy, you need to listen to Dr. Dr. Um, oh, good, I just forgot his name now. New Discourses, James Lindsay. Need to listen to the he's the he's the he's the heavy witness. This man's work is phenomenal right now on this. So there was the enlightenment that was nourished by Christianity and the enlightenment that cut itself off from God. The first enlightenment, the Christian enlightenment, led to the American Revolution, the Declaration of Independence, the abolition of slavery, and the civil rights movement. The radical enlightenment led to the French Revolution, the atheist reign of terror, the suppression of church by state and the godless philosophies of Marx and Nietzsche and their offspring, the national socialism of Hitler and communism. 
More recently, the abandonment of God has led to the regime of, regime of cultural relativism that regards rights as arbitrary constructions. So atheism taken to its logical conclusion, and many atheists do say this, that you have no rights because the universe is random. There are no rights. There's only survival of the fittest, right? Whoever has the power. Basically, it's the law. It's the golden rule. Whoever has the gold makes the rules. Yes. So you see, all of these ideas are not Christian. Uh, yes, Sam, you want to say something? So you're basically telling me the way American politics is headed it's heading to implementing this very idea because this sounds like the progressives in America. The it is. It's the same idea. It goes back to two and a half thousand years ago and it goes into the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, atheism. We, we're going to, you're going to, I'm really just putting the pieces on the table. Is it making sense so far, Sam? It is not only making sense. It's actually scary because you, what you're telling me, it sounds like what I hear from our politicians on television, on YouTube specifically the liberal progressives. This is what they're arguing for and pushing for. Pretty much they want to implement the system. This is what you hear. Now we know the source. It all goes back to the same source. And it's satanic and anti-Christian, anti-Christ. Yes, all of it. So this second enlightenment tradition that Cardinal Ratzinger, this is the Pope that was deposed and we now have the new Pope, he wrote, the radical detachment of the Enlightenment philosophy from its roots ultimately leads it to dispense with man. When you get rid of God, you devalue man. Now, this transition happened not ultimately, but almost immediately. Man was devalued the moment God was dispensed with. You know, it's amazing. Yes. What you just quoted from Car Cardinal Ratzinger, this man just said right now, Mr. Squid. It's like he almost anticipated this quote. Without God, yeah. man is nothing. <laughs> exactly. Right. So the first instance occurred when the enlightenment worship of abstract reason and liberty degenerated quickly into the mass murders connect, committed during the anti-religious reign of terror in France. Liberty, what crimes are committed in your name, said Madame Roland as she faced the Statue of Liberty. Yes, the Statue of Liberty, that little French thing, in the Place de la Révolution, moments, moments, not the typo, before her death at the guillotine. She was one of the early victims of a succession of secular systems based on rootless notions of liberty, equality, and reason. So these were man-made designs of what is liberty? Well, I think it is. And then you had a bunch of philosophers arguing over these terms, what they meant, what kind of political system, social system need to be constructed. There was nothing based on an idea of God, nothing that was transcendent. Everything was purely temporal based on whoever could convince you this was the meaning of that word at the time. As many historians have pointed out, the atheist regimes of modern times are guilty of far more crimes than any committed in the name of religion. We're going to go into specifics. We're going to bring up numbers. We're going to go into stats. Atheists lie to you about Christianity. You know, atheism is the number one big time murderer in all of history. Modern atheism is the number one big time mass murderer in all of history. So, communist governments alone were guilty of more than 100 million murders most of them committed against their own people, and that's only in the 20th century, right? So we're going to talk about more of that. This is, <clears throat> I'm just quoting from the book. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to bring up that quote by Dostoevsky. So thanks to the new crop of atheist boosters, <clears throat> we hear a lot about the 500-year-old crimes of the Inquisition. But less than two decades after the collapse of godless communism, there's an eerie silence about the mass graves of the Soviet gulag. Right. Atheists got to go back 500 years, 800 years, you know, whereas we can go back just a couple of decades and we can say, well, hey, what about these 200 million people that were killed by atheist governments, formerly atheist governments? And there's Fyodor Dostoevsky, <laughs> someone, <laughs> the very same quote. <clears throat> if there is no God, then everything is permitted. So now, atheism or death, like Islam, but atheist. Let's look at the atheist policy of de-Christianization by murder by the French atheist state. On September 2, 1792, at Calm Prison in Paris, over 100 Catholic priests were jailed within an old monastery. Their crime? Refusing to give up Christianity for the beliefs of the new secular atheist republic. A mob stormed the prison and they slaughtered 115 priests. That bloodbath was just one of several remembered as the September massacres. Over four days from the 2nd to the 6th, 
up to 1,614 people were known to have been murdered because they were Christians. Because they would not accept atheism. Because, as you know, Sam, atheism is a religion of peace. You see, you mean, once we have... Sorry? You mean pieces, a piece here and a piece there, like Islam. Pieces. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's making pieces right here. See? There's a woman lying on the ground and he's making pieces right here. Let's continue. The atheist purge. These atrocities were part of a deliberate escalating campaign of violence known as dechristianization. This was government policy. It was passed into law. The atheists passed law by which atheists violently purged religion from France in the name of reason and rationality. Atheists like Pierre Chaumet and Jacques Heber argued that this was necessary so that reason would triumph over superstition and fanaticism. In other words, they murdered hundreds of thousands of people because to get rid of superstition because it, so that reason would triumph over superstition they needed to murder maybe half a million people. And yet you just showed it's steeped in the occultism. Occultism. Gonna get so here's what's ironic. They want to get rid of Christianity superstition to embrace another superstitious system, occultism. Yeah, very rational. Yeah. Entirely rational. It's a religion of peace, Sam. It's, it's rational. In their eyes, churches were weeds in need of plowing so that their enlightened ideas could grow. Crosses were seized from altars. Bowels were plundered and melted down. Now, the very same were done by, quite bluntly, in Protestant history, the Protestants did exactly the same to the Catholics during the Reformation. The calendar was changed from a seven-day week to a 10-day week. Sundays were removed from the calendar so that there would be no day to worship. That's what the French did. The secularists no longer wanted to base their dating system on the birth of Jesus. They based it upon the birth of their revolution. Now, I will let you know, the Soviet Union did the very same. The Soviet Union removed Sunday so there would, no, would be no day of worship. And the Islamic calendar, the Islamic Hijra calendar, also did not want to be dated on the birth of Jesus. They dated it on the birth of their revolution. <laughs> and, but here's what's interesting, Lloyd. Now, guys, yeah. see this quote? They don't want to date it from the birth of Christ. Well, guess what they're doing now? And you know this. Now they talk about BCE and CE. Before Common Era and Common Era. So, guys, did you see? It's been a concerted effort to remove Jesus from our calendar. So, when you Christians say BCE, CE, you're following their satanic agenda. So, instead of saying BC, before Christ, AD, Anno Domini, in the year of our Lord, they're saying BCE, before Common Era. It's before communism and before the communist era. Sorry. Yeah. Before which communism. Has, which, again, what made it common? It was the birth of Christ. So don't fall for that. Do not use BCE and CE, BC yeah. and AD in their face. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So the worship of reason, paganism returns. So this is the goddess of reason, right? This is the goddess of reason. And this is the ceremony where these atheists are now worshiping the goddess of reason, taking her through the streets. Atheists tried to replace Christianity with their own belief system. The cult of reason was the very first state-sponsored atheistic religion. It was a godless alternative to churches where citizens could hear sermons that instilled virtue without any biblical language. In other words, when you had a funeral, they would talk about decomposition. You know? <clears throat> yes, exactly. Yep. Now, the churches were deconsecrated into temples of reason devoted to the worship of reason, personified as a woman bearing a torch. You might might look familiar. Anything? See anything familiar, Sam? So this is actually a symbol of the goddess of reason? I didn't even know that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's, there's a history to this. Um, yeah, there's a story around this as well. But yeah, but there you go. The atheists made up their own holiday for it. The Festival of Reason held on 10th November, 1793 at Notre Dame Cathedral. Now, of course, we, we've all heard, you may have heard stories of how they deconsecrated Notre Dame Cathedral by having prostitutes and having skimpily or naked women walking around the altar. And apparently they had sex with the prostitutes on the altar to deconsecrate it because that's reasonable. That's, that's, that's what you do when you're reasonable. And sci In fact, Sam, that's scientific. That's scientific atheism right there. Altars were rededicated to truth and liberty. The festival was not a dignified ceremony, but a spectacle, a Mardi Gras or a pride parade. Lady Liberty, 
Liberty enlightening the world replaced Virgin Mary on several altars to symbolize enlightenment thinking. See, they just replace. They don't. Re they don't actually. They actually just replace your symbols with their symbols. <coughs> so, the cult of reason was based on the principles of enlightenment. Its guiding principle was to exercise reason. It was anti-clerical in the extreme. Also, anti-clericalism is found in pre-Protestant heresy and then taken up by Martin Luther, right? I will get into that. Its goal was the perfection of man through the attainment of truth and liberty via reason. In other words, Gnosticism and the hermetic wisdom of the ages, very similar to the socialist man, man made in the image of man. It encouraged congregational worship and devotional displays based on reason, thus the festival of reason. This was the atheist way of being reasonable and scientific by having pagan occult Greek occult ceremonies. Okay, since we're talking about reason and the enlightenment, enlightenment was awesome and bloody, but let's have a look at the Humanist Canada website. They have profound respect. Humanism is a philosophy or lifestyle based on profound respect for human dignity and the conviction that we all ultimately accountable to ourselves and to society for our actions. Our worldview is deity free and without the reliance upon a belief in the supernatural. Reason and science are the best ways to understand the world and compassion should be the basis for how we act towards each other. Remember these words, compassion, reason, science. Remember these words, please. We live in a fair and equal society. That's all we want, a fair and equal society. Through our ceremonies, Hold on, why is an atheist organization having ceremonies, Sam? Because the word ceremony is a religious, a church, you have church ceremonies. And through our educational services, and we bring humanism to communities across the country. In other words, they are proselytizing, <laughs> they're, they're evangelizing their atheism, and they're raising awareness on the national stage. They are propagandizing. And see, they are mimicking religion. They're a simulacrum of religion. Islam's a copycat. Atheism is a copycat exactly. as well. So this is fine. So now, now we have an understanding of what humanist Canada. Look, I just picked a random one. I could have picked humanist USA, but I thought, let's, you know, I thought, look, Canada, you know, there's three, there's three genders, right? Men, women, and Canadians, right? Canadians are harmless. Okay. I mean, like when you, when you think Canadian, you think fluffy pillow, right? You think harmless. So I thought, okay, let's, let's, let's have a look at what the Canadians have going for them. Now let's have a look at the seven fundamental tenets of the satanic temple. Let's see if if these atheist humanists have any similar, you know, just, just roughly similar ideas. You know, let's have a look. We need to strive to act with compassion and empathy towards all creatures with reason. Sam, if you're an atheist, you need to have compassion and act with reason. We want justice, okay? And justice is a necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws. So if the law was wrong and you, you believe that, that, that justice, you know, your justice, you, your, your truth is greater than the law of the land, you need to pursue your truth, even if it goes against the law and the institutions. You see, you need to change the law, you see? And beliefs should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. This is scientific Satanism. This is not just regular. This is not your mama's Satanism or your grandpa's Satanism. This is scientific Satanism. And you should take care never to distort scientific facts because, as you know, men can get pregnant. Don't be a bigot. <clears throat> and every tenet is a guiding principle designed to inspire nobility in action and thought. The spirit of compassion, of wisdom and justice should always prevail over the written or spoken word. And this is identical to Islam's concept of niyat, intention over outcome. The sharia must always be more important than man-made laws. See? So your subjective sense stands over and above the law. There's no difference between this and Islam. And yeah, so any thoughts on the sand before I go on? I was just looking at point three. One's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. That's pro-choice. Yes. The religion of pro choice. You see, guys, point three one's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. So, a woman says, It's my body, and I can choose to murder that life in my womb because it's my body. Now, she doesn't call it murder, but that's what it is. You see it? 
It's all the tenets of humanism, which is anchored in Satanism. And one real quick, and I'm sure he's going to get to it. Sure. A lot of people don't know that Satanism is not necessarily worship of Satan, but worship of self. Do what thou will, not God's will. Because that was Satan's lie to Adam and Eve. You can be your own God, do your own thing. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. No, we're going to start. We'll tie all of this together. So this is the creed of the satanic temple, which, as you should know, is enlightened. Okay? So don't forget, scientific atheists, humanists claim to follow the enlightenment philosophy, right? The rational philosophy. And so does the satanic temple, oddly enough. Let us continue here, right? Now, satanic atheism, it's enlightened. You need to remember this, right? Levays. Now, this is Anton Levay, one of the arch atheists and, well, one of the arch Satanists of the 20th century. Levay's Satanism is atheistic. It is a carnal religion. Carnal means to do with sex. Okay. So, Levay's Satanism is atheistic. Followers believe that all gods are fictitious, that ultimate importance is found in the self and pursuing self interests. Satan is not a deity, but a metaphor the ultimate adversary of irrationality and religious beliefs. So religious beliefs are irrational and Satan is rational. Satan stands against religious beliefs. Satan stands against the Logos. Satan is rational. It's a metaphor. It is you defying the system that I mentioned in the beginning. And the name Satan comes from the Hebrew for one who opposes. 100%. Now, now by the way, Lloyd, yeah, you, can so? confirm, you can confirm. I did not know what his slides <clears throat> what kind of slides yeah. he sent. So notice I already talked about what Satanism is, and lo and behold, he has slides quoting Anton LaVey confirming this is what Satanism is. Keep that in mind. You can have secular symbolism, ritual, and pageantry. So in other words, even though it is an atheistic religion, they worship Satan, it's atheistic, you can have secular symbolism, ritual, and pageantry, theater, and it's very effective and something that is part of the nature of the human animal. The ritual chamber can be a place where you can dramatically perform what I call self-transformational psychodrama. We release the emotions that we find would be injuring us in the regular pursuit of our happiness so that we can then let them go. This is narcissism. Understand? This is talking about narcissism. It is found in the self and pursuing self-interest. This is all about you, right? And now let's have a look at Lucian Greaves. He is the spokesperson for the Satanic Temple. It's not that we're just looking for disorder, chaos, and to undermine Western civilization. In fact, we're really trying to endorse for enlightenment values. The Satanic Temple is really endorsing enlightenment values. We are bringing reason and respect for science into bettering the human condition. That's what the Satanic Temple really does. Enlightenment values, science, and reason, Sam. Yes. Isn't that what atheism does? They, they endorse for enlightenment values and they bring reason and respect for science and they want to better. Satanism and atheism say literally the same things and have very same values. Which is should be no surprise. The temple's seven tenets speak to this worldview. They ask followers to act with compassion. Oh, that word again, compassion. To respect the freedom of others and to take care that beliefs don't distort scientific facts. Men can get pregnant. Don't be a bigot. Now, let's look at Aaron Ra, arch-atheist who came out as a Satanist not that long ago. Why did I join the Satanic Temple? Why? Because the Satanists are the good guys. That's on his Twitter, by the way. <laughs> and this is Aaron Ra. He's an atheist activist. Now, he's doing atheism wrong because he doesn't just have a lack of belief. Someone didn't tell him how to do atheism. Does he even atheism, bro? Sam? So he actually said this because there was a clip. Yes, this is on his Twitter. I don't need any rituals. I joined to support the human rights activism. Okay, so okay. So he did join. This is on his Twitter. Activism. This is, I oh. took this off his Twitter a week ago. All right. Okay. Your thoughts, sorry? <clears throat> no, I was because I had seen a clip of him saying he went to the satanic temple, but someone said it was misrepresented. But this is him. This is his Twitter. That's him saying. Yes. He joined no, he he has a video where he states publicly he has become a Satanist. He's still an atheist, though, but he's a Satanist. <clears throat> and the Satanic Temple alleges 
Idaho abortion laws violate blah, blah, blah. So the Satanic Temple has filed two court cases just in Indiana against anti-abortion laws. You know, so this this is their human rights activism so that abortion can be made legal. Just so you know that Satanists, there's a, there's a claim you will find common commonly that there's always at least one atheist within uh, who, who's part of a coven, you know, a sa- part of the satanic church, who is always in every abortion clinic because they want to be there as part of any ceremonies that kills a baby. Because when they can do this, if they kill the child, they can use that as part of a satanic ritual to enact a spell. So this is part of their process. Right. So now, atheistic woke Satanism. Satan respects your pronouns. And here we have the Baphomet, Satan respects your pronouns. All righty that looks friendly. Woke is Satanic, atheism is Satanic, and woke is Marxist. And Marxism is, we know that woke is Marxist. We know that woke is atheist. Now, trust me, this is one little, this is one little circle jerk going on here. Satan loves you and respects who you are. You're important and valuable, and you deserve to treat yourself with love and respect. I've been thinking a lot lately about the Satanic Temple and the Church of Satan. They are so misunderstood and demonized. Yes, and LGBTP, LGBTFU plus people are so often referred to as being the product of Satan or going against God's will. Satanists don't actually believe in Satan. He's used as a symbol of passion, a symbol of pride and liberty. He means to you what you need him to mean. For me, Satan is hope, compassion, equality, and love. See, it's atheistic Satanism. They will tell you afterwards that not all Satanists are atheists. Some Satanists believe in Satan. Some Satanists believe in Isis, the the other goddess that we just was part of the French Revolution, that the goddess of reason. So that's fascinating. Satanists who believe in Isis, the goddess of reason that was worshipped in the French Revolution. And that's just a coincidence. Naturally, Satan respects pronouns. He loves all LGBTFU plus people. The Church of Satan openly accepts LGBTFU plus people. It has done since it was created. And the more recent Satanic Temple accepts them too with open arms. Just so you know. Before you go on, Lloyd, I don't know if he's being an apologist for atheism. And he just wants to be a nitpicker. When people come to my channel, nitpick, they get sent back to the satanic temple. You never at once said that all atheists are satanists. And you just said there are satanists that may believe in Satan, Lucifer. So if this man is patient and doesn't bark before he gets muzzled, yeah. You would see you're going to address that issue. I just want to make well, that clear. Well, there's a guy that's going, well, you know, I, I'm an atheist and I haven't murdered anyone. I haven't started a French revolution. It's like, you're still, well, first of all, atheism is a doctrine. It has a very dirty history. It is tied to all of these things very historically. So the fact that you don't particularly do these means that, you know, it's like not all Muslims are jihadis yet. They haven't done violent jihad yet. It is part of their doctrine. It is written into the fabric of the doctrine. It is their law. So the fact is that they haven't done it yet just means they haven't done it yet. That's all. You are still part of the same doctrine. This is what your doctrine believes. This is what your doctrine practices. This is part of your doctrine's history. Whether you, The fact that you are ignorant, is that is not my problem. That's your problem. If it embarrasses you, I don't know, go join a church. I've always loved the juxtaposition of creepy or weird things being presented as soft or cute. Now we're talking about children's toys and children's clothes, babies. Personally, I think Baphomet, a mystical deity, looks very charming in their pastel colors. Baphomet themselves is a mixture of genders. They hardly fit into binary stereotypes. And we know that Baphomet, before he became Satan in the 1800s, was Muhammad. Yep, you covered that in the previous sessions. Go to the Gnostic roots of Islam and how Islam has influenced modern occult movements. Baphomet... Perversion of Ma Mahomet. Mahomet. That's what they used to call him. So yep. Go watch those series. Yeah, no. And also, I mean, Candan says you're on the same team, Mao, like it or not. Yes, you're on the same team as Mao, Stalin, Lenin. You're on the same team. Think about this. You know, atheists call themselves. I, I've posted this recently in a video. Atheists call themselves scientific atheists. Uh, this is used by Dawkins, Harris, you, you name it. <clears throat> they call themselves scientific atheists. They practice scientific atheism, and they practice militant atheism. Who invented these terms? Well, a guy called Marx and a guy called Engels, right? And 
The Soviets were scientific atheists. They practiced scientific atheism. It was the official ideology of the Soviet state, of the communist state. Right? So now, hold on. Let's see. And they also, they were required, and I will be covering all of this as we go, but they were also required to spread the quote-unquote propaganda of atheism. This was official government Soviet policy. They had to spread the propaganda of atheism. Now, if you listen to the propaganda of atheism from the Soviets, it's identical to what modern atheists like yourself, that's you I'm pointing at, say today. There's no difference. Now, let's see. The 2023 atheist calls himself a scientific atheist. He calls himself a militant atheist. They practice militant atheism. They practice scientific atheism. It's exactly the same names as used by Marx, Stalin, Lenin, Mao, Pol Pot, all of the worst genocidal murderers in all of history. And your propaganda is word for word the very same as the propaganda practiced by these psychopathic atheist murderers. How are you different? Please explain to me how, when you have the same names and the very same propaganda, word for word, how are you different? How do we distinguish you from them? Please explain. Drop it in the comment. Lie to me. Lloyd, you don't get it, though. There are some atheists like Bob Price, who's anti-woke, and Douglas Murray, who's essentially anti-Marxism. He's not getting what you just said. I know he's kind of a little nope. mentally, mentally mm -hmm. slow and challenged, so let's help him because we have to have compassion on the yeah. mentally challenged. You're affirming that the root of atheism, where atheism originates from, this is its worldview. Now, if you have some dissenters and detractors, that doesn't refute the fact that atheism originates from a system that teaches yes. all of this, and it's part and parcel of its ideology. So if you have some detractors or rebels, that's on them. You're representing what atheism historically has taught. It's just like you have Muslims who are Quran only Muslims. Okay, that's okay. That doesn't mean that Islam was based on the Quran alone. But he's kind of slow. Like, no, he's bit. under the banner of atheism. Atheism is woke. Atheism is Marxist. It is Stalinist. It is communist. Atheism is satanic. Atheism is genocidal. We're going to go through all of this. This is the history of atheism. Atheism is a doctrine. It has written books on how to atheize or whatever you want to call it. Okay, how to atheist. Atheism is a doctrine. Now, Muslims, sorry, atheists, you know, it's so easy to confuse the two. You know, they will say that, but you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and I know that, that that makes perfect sense to me too. You heard that. I said it. I meant it. But understand that atheists don't realize they are deliberately ignorant of the history because the history is shameful and embarrassing to them. Two, it is a doctrine. Atheists, the village atheist, of which you are a fine example, thank you, want to claim there is no doctrine in atheism. Unfortunately, the sciences, academia, disagrees with you. I have another series where I've got about 70 plus, okay, almost 80 definitions of atheism from something like 75 academic encyclopedias and academic textbooks from Princeton, Yale, Oxford, Cambridge, you name it. I've got the foremost atheists in the world who've written books. I've got the books. These are the top academics on earth. And unfortunately, when you look at all of these definitions, they all say atheism is a doctrine, a system of belief. It has a whole bunch of rules and there's books explain how to atheist. It's not just a lack of belief. Sadly, you're lying to yourself, but you're not lying to me, Sam, or anyone else in the chat. Atheism is a doctrine. It is a belief. It is an entire corpus of beliefs, just like any religion. It was founded explicitly as a religion. I will move on because hopefully, you know, if you're slow, I can't help you. <clears throat> so, Sam, I'll just go on unless you want to add anything. You said you could do nine parts in this. Please, as Easily. much as you want, 10, 11, please do it here for the channel. We, we get more people to be aware of this so they can go to your channel and subscribe. Brother, do a series. If it takes you two months to finish, no rush. I want you to do an entire series for the glory of Jesus Christ. So continue, brother. Well, well, thank you, Sam. So this is from the historian Sir Simon Sharma, brilliant man as well. Okay. Oh, yeah. Religion prevents wars, except Islam. Yes, thank you, Romeo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the churches were often stripped of all priestly objects. There were urgent practical reasons for this theft. Church bells were needed for the arms foundries, gold and silver for the Republic's treasury, because they needed to make weapons. They had Christians to go and kill, don't you know? Through a great deal of the latter, Though a great deal of the latter certainly found its way into the pockets of the de-Christianizers. But there was also pure vandalism on a scale. 
Altarpieces were slashed, stained glass windows broken, devotional manuals and hymnals were burned in great bonfires. Together with the plaster and wood saints found on every road crossing, crackling and melting in flames like the inanimate victims of an auto de fe. That Simon, so these people were incredibly anti-Christian. They were incredibly destructive when they came across Christian symbolism, which is actually, oddly enough, again, what happened to the Catholic Church during the Protestant Reformation and what Muslims do. It's no different. Now, if you practice the same things, if you use the same names, if you call yourself by the same name that Marx called himself, if you practice the same thing that Marx practiced, and if you use exactly the same word-for-word propaganda that Marx, Lenin, Stalin, and Mao, and even Hitler used, how are you different from them? Please show me how your propaganda is different from that of Marx and Lenin and Mao and Stalin. You're saying the same things. How are you different? Please explain to me. Don't dodge. Just explain to me. Yes, I have, I have the very same name Lenin used. I have the very same name Stalin used. I call myself by the same title. I use exactly the same propaganda word for word, but I'm not like Stalin. Please explain to me how you're different. Drop that in the comment. Don't dodge. Don't try to deflect. Just answer the question. Do try. Embarrass yourself. Thank you. Right. Before you move so on, reason, you guys, yeah. let me just, guys, you can still hear him, right? Because your screen is frozen, but I can hear you. I just want to make sure they can hear oh, you. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Um, so we, I can hear you loud and clear, but your your Okay. Your, uh, any change? Now. Yeah. Let me see. Guys, can you hear him? The screen? Yeah. Okay. They can hear you. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Good more the fro as long as the sun, because I can hear you. Actually. Okay. Am I still coming through? Am I, guys, am I coming through? Now you are. Go ahead. Now you are. Now you are. Go ahead. You're doing good. Okay, Sam, you're back. I think I'm back. Uh, are we back? Yes, we could hear you. All that we heard you. So your sound was clear, but your face was frozen. So yeah, I think I'm you. back now. Yes, you are. You're back now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, I okay. can hear you back. We okay, heard sorry about that. Heard. We just let okay, you know we heard. No. You. So come on, go ahead. Okay, the reason becomes a pride parade. Priests were made to confess that they had lied. That they had lied to the people. They had to renounce their belief and functions as ministers of the Catholic Church in public. These are communist struggle sessions, right? This is what Mao practiced, declaring that henceforth they would recognize no public worship but that of liberty, equality, and fraternity. These are communist struggle sessions. This was practiced in the 60s by the communists in China. A Prussian nobleman, a personal enemy of God and Jesus Christ, the orator of mankind, the speaker for mankind, an avowed atheist, Anacarsis J.B. Klutz. Anacarsis, right, um, from Jean-Jacques Barthélemy's famous philosophical romance, Travels of Anacarsis the Younger in Greece. He called himself Anacarsis Klutz. His name was actually something else, right? But notice he took the name from a Greek story, right? He declared that the Republic, the French Republic, would contain but one God only, the people. See? The people. And then some people describe the festival of reason as lurid, licentious, or scandalous. This is being polite. Sexual debauchery was an outcome of this atheistic reason, as we see atheism had this morality thing tightly dialed in. You know, having sex on the altar at, at Notre Dame, you know, that, that's, that's reasonable, right? Let me continue. Now, the word lurid means causing horror or revulsion, gruesome, right? Melodramatic, sensational, also shocking. So they went in for the shocking. They went in for the sensational, for the gruesome. They wanted to cause revulsion. Licentious means formal disapproving, especially of a person or their behavior, sexual in an uncontrolled and socially unacceptable way. So when the sexual mores of the church of the Christian West was removed from France, people turned to public sexual debauchery. They had their freedom. They no longer had these moral guidelines. They became sexually perverse. Uh, your thoughts, Sam, before I go on? Yes, we can hear you perfectly loudly and clear. Just to let you know your image is frozen. And oh, if you were, can, if can you, I can I step out and then come back in? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So let me stop sharing. I'm going to leave the studio. Come back into the studio. All right? Because I'm seeing you just fine. On my side, it's looking. Everything's looking oh, normal. I will you leave. Don't know. Change your slide. Your slide was still on enlightenment and vandalism. Okay, we'll leave and come back. Okay. He'll be back, guys. Man, I got to shave. I'm looking older, guys. Each night, each day I live, I live to be the very best. Did you hear about that vandalism? You caught it, right? Pray in Jesus' name. The Lord Jesus blesses the internet connection, the audio visual qualities, and rebukes Satan from distracting us. But you caught it? 
Vandalism. Does that sound? Does that sound like something that's happening now? Vandalism. Hmm. The woke crowd, when they get riled up, they go around and vandalize stores and statues. Vandalism. Hmm. Does that have an origin somewhere? Hmm. There you go, brother. Go ahead. All right. Yeah. Can everyone see me again? Yes. Is everything back to normal? That's perfect. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, everything looked normal on my side. That was so strange. Everything looked perfect on my end. The kingdom of darkness is getting angry, but he that is in us is greater than he's in the world by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. So go ahead, brother. Amen. Yeah. So this was the next slide that I had. I'm seeing it here, and hopefully I will be seeing it here as well now. Let me just check that it's true. Yes, it's on YouTube. Okay, great. We're back. Sorry about that interruption. Okay. So priests were made, so reason became an 18th century pride parade. Priests were made to confess that they had lied, that they misled people, that to publicly renounce their belief and functions as ministers of the church, that to declare that they henceforth would recognize no public worship, but only the worship of liberty, equality, and fraternity. In other words, they would practice state atheism in state churches and give state sermons, state-backed sermons in atheism. And these are very much the same as communist struggle sessions. There was a Prussian nobleman now, the Prussians originally were pagans. They were the enemies of the Poles. They were chased out of Poland in the 1400s eventually. They are pagans. And, of course, they came back as, well, under Bismarck, you can say they came back before then into Poland to have their revenge. He, was a, he, would, he called himself and was known as a personal enemy of God, a personal enemy of Jesus Christ. He was known as the speaker for mankind or the orator of mankind. He was an avowed atheist. His name was Anacostus which he took from this Travels of Anacostus the Younger in Greece. And his name was Jean-Baptiste Klutz, and he declared that the Republic would contain only one God, the people. Now, the Festival of Reason was lurid, licentious, and scandalous, and basically it became sexual debauchery. So the term lurid means causing horror or revulsion, shocking, sensational, melodramatic. And licentious. Now, remember, they, they spoke of the, when you, we saw Anton LaVey, they mentioned that people would have an opportunity to express themselves using this kind of, you know, this, this really outspoken, sensational sessions. Now, you're seeing the same idea is still present. You know, you, you got to bring your whole self to work, right? You got to be, you know, let it all out, let all your emotions out. No, there, were no, there was no moral framework to guide them. They became se sexually debauched. So, licentious disapproving, especially of a person or their behavior, which is sexual in an uncontrolled and socially unacceptable way. So Robespierre, the man of terror's state cult. Um, so after the embarrassment of the cult of reason, because it crashed after a couple of years, the Freemason, and I, did, I, did I mention there was a lot of Freemasonry going on in France, Sam? There's a no, lot. I you completely forgot that part. No, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Freemasonry, luckily, is religion. Peace. You know, Freemasons mean well. You know, they're, they're lodges that are open to anyone, and they're just there to do good works, Sam. That's all they are. They, they got nothing to do with the French Revolution, you know, and nothing to do with atheism either, oddly enough, oddly enough. And so the Freemason, Robespierre, achieved dictatorial power and decided to establish his own state religion called the Cult of the Supreme Being. Because, hey, let's try this again. You know, re real, real state atheist religion has never been tried before. <laughs> so the new deistic religion, and that's, that's a long story on its own. The new deistic religion was intended to curb the excesses associated with the de-Christianization movement and the replacement of Catholicism with the new state religion. It briefly lasted to the spring and summer of 1794, lasted even less time. The cult of the supreme being supported the idea of a supreme being and immortality of the soul. Let's just say they realized they needed to give people something. So they needed a fake religion that was kind of half Christianity and half not. However, it was not consistent with Christian doctrine, as the only way virtue could be attained was through fidelity and devotion to the state, to the state idea of liberty and democracy. Now we go back to Plutarch. You see, you must be a servant of the state. It's fascist as well, as someone said earlier, you know, everything within the state, nothing outside the state, everything for the state. So, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, and this is, this is public history. This is nothing that I'm, I'm not making up anything here. Uh, Sam, what are you getting out of this so far? And 
it, it's it's actually it's frightening to see how this is now being implemented. Not only let's see, we see it globally. I mean, in America, if I didn't know any better, you're talking about the woke movement, the Black Lives Matter, because it sounds exactly everything you said about vandalism and all this. That's what they're doing now. So you're basically confirming there is a concerted effort. It's a satanic agenda. The powers that be are bringing about the destruction of Christianity to bring in this movement. <clears throat> and yet people are asleep. So thank God for people like you to make us aware of it. Welcome. No, thank you. And thank you for giving me the, the platform, you know, the opportunity to, to do this. Okay, let me continue. Now we're going to go into some of the atrocities that were committed. Now, understand that according to the historians that I've read, the atrocities are even worse than I will illustrate here. They said it's even worse. It was, it was horrific. Okay, this matches what happened during World War II by a certain group. All right. So let's look at the atheist, the atheist that trust yet not. Now remember, atheists are going to talk about the the uh, what's it, the witches in America? Those those nineteen witches that were killed. They're going to talk about you know eight hundred year old atrocities in the French Revolution. Uh, sorry, in the whatever. I mean, they're going to go back in history to find well, you Christians did X, Y, and Z. Now we're going to look at the very first atheist state committing the very first atheist atrocities, and <clears throat> the atheist that trust yet not. This is one of many, right? The revolutionary atheists passed a law that all non-conforming clergy, clergy that would not renounce Christianity, remember what I said, atheism or death, right? Islam or death, <laughs> same thing, weird. All non-conforming clergy would be killed on sight. Anyone who looked after, who harbored these enemies of the state was subject to death. Any family that harbored a priest or a nun would be murdered along with the priest or nun if found children and all, okay? The whole family would die. Jean-Baptiste Carrier enforced the law by loading priests and nuns like cattle onto boats and he ferried them down the Loire River. They were stripped naked and they were tied together in pairs, one priest to a nun in what he called Republican marriages designed to mock their vows of celibacy. They were then thrown overboard. They had a pole. Also, they were stuck a pole in with them to weigh them down. Then they were thrown overboard to drown. If there wasn't a nun, they would strap two priests together in a sexual pose. Let's just call it that. Okay? Two male priests would be strapped together. This proved too inefficient for mass executions. So because these are rational, scientific atheists following enlightenment principles, they decided to load the boats with as many people as they could and then sink the boats so that everyone would drown. So he sank the vessels with everyone trapped on board, drowning them in what was dubbed the National Bathtub. Between 4,800 and 9,000 people are known to have been murdered in the drownings at Nantes, including innocent families with women and children, all in the cause of atheism. Now, atheists love to say, well, you know, an atheist might have done it, but not done in the name of atheism. This was policy. This was the atheist policy to become an atheist or die. Yeah. Sam, up to you, because I'm going to lose my mind here. Yeah, so... You're basically confirming that these so-called rational, reasonable people who based everything on science tortured and murdered children, parents, even nuns and priests in some of the most inhumane fashions, huh? like drowning them alive. Oh, we're gonna, we, it gets worse, Sam. It gets worse. This yeah. is just a, uh, this is an intro. But see, here's the problem with you. You don't see that this is very reasonable. You don't get it. This is reasonable what they're doing. So, see, that's your problem. Even you deal with Islam. You just don't. Anyway. I told you, I'm from Africa. That's one strike against me, right? I attended a school for emotionally disturbed teachers. That's another strike against me. Okay, so, so yeah, man, I'm trying. I'm trying, man. I'm trying, you know? So according to historian Reynold Secher, a Frenchman who grew up in this area where, these, where, these, where this particular genocide happened, these murders are one component of a systematic government policy of extermination of the residents of the Vendée, planned by the Revolutionary Committee of Public Safety. They were called the Committee of Public Safety. And they were approved by vote and they were passed into law of the National Convention in Paris on 1 October 1793. Actually, so while I'm here, I need to maybe bring this up. 
So part of public safety included that they exterminate people that they thought were unsafe. Okay. Uh, yeah, hold on. I need to find the history. No, I... Rational. Don't you get it? It's rational, reasonable. To be safe, you got to exterminate, murder those whom you deem to be unfit and unsafe for society. See, but you don't see the rationality. That's the problem. I mean, I can't help you there. I can't help okay, you. Okay, let me show you this. Let me show you this. Uh, yeah, somewhat accidentally closed. This is in French. Now, the sad thing is a lot of this information, when you look, like it'll be in French or Turkish or Bulgarian or something that you don't speak, right? Hungarian. This is the Franco-French genocide. This is a Wikipedia page. Now, this, this is a very famous scholar, a very famous historian who wrote this. And then it was vetted by other famous historians. <laughs> yeah, Aaron Ra. Yeah, what an a-hole. So, the Franco-French genocide by Reynold Secher. He's a very famous French historian. He grew up in this area called the Vendée. Okay, Let's have a look here. He speaks of the following. According to Reynold Sesheth's thesis, the repression exercised in the Vendee corresponds to a proto-industrial genocide, a legal genocide, which manifests itself by the vote. So these people passed laws prescribing the extermination of the men, the deportation of the women and children, and destruction of the territory that burned whole villages down. They prescribed the extermination of the brigands. Okay, Many of the brigands happened to be embryos in the womb, babies and children of whom 110 are known to have been under eight years old, right? Let's have a look at some of the means of extermination, some of the things these French atheists did, because these people were Catholics and they said no and they fought back. They refused to recant, okay? Wait, wait before you say that, they were Catholics who would yes. rather be tortured and murdered than recant yes. and deny Jesus Christ, their God and Savior, and justify even, let's say, murder of unborn so these were yes. catholics but according to luther and protestants they were not really christians so you don't forget that so go ahead in fact there was never a catholic church do you know that in fact in fact you know what we are sinning by having churches because you know what the early christians only had house churches and in fact they were in caves they were in caves and they were in they were in catacombs now unless you're following the bible exactly Unless yeah. you're having a church worship in a cave or a catacomb, you are you are not being a proper Christian, Sam. Am I wrong? Am I reading this right? Oh, no, you're getting you're becoming too rational for my taste. So okay, but go ahead. So so yeah, I mean, you we have to follow that example, and uh, so I need to find the nearest catacomb or cave and, and go have, you know. So yeah, this this okay. So yeah, excuse my sarcasm. Uh, I'll be, uh, anyway, Reynolds Secher lists the various proto-industrial, so this is pre-industrial means implemented by the Committee of Public Safety. <clears throat> At Ponce de Say, bags are made from men's or women's skin. Policemen's trousers are made from human skin. Bread ovens are used to burn the villagers alive in luc sur -Boulon. and cremation then takes place in the church. Extermination camps are established in Nourmatière. Unsuccessful gassing attempts were carried out by the chemist deputy. Unsuccessful gassing attempts. They tried to gas using poison gas to kill people in the area. Boats are sunk in the Loire. We've just spoken about that. And in Clisson, the fat is extracted by the carbonization of villages. It is used to make soap. We're going to talk about this. People had their skin removed to make bags and trousers. Okay. People were stuffed into ovens and cremated in ovens. Does this sound familiar, Sam? Wow. The oven part, of course, Nazi Germany, but you said people were skinned and their fat was taken from them? People, so I will, I will, I will get to, I'll get into detail on all of this. This is recorded historically. This is recorded historically. This is atheism. These are atheists being rational, murdering Christians so that, so that sanity will prevail and that superstition will be removed from the world. This is the rational thing to do. It's the scientific thing to do. So I will continue. I will continue here. So Jean-Baptiste Carrier says, never have I had so much amusement as in seeing the last grimaces of priests as they die. Right? So let's continue. So the Vendée, a detailed narrative of the civil war in Western France at the height of the reign of terror from March 1793 to 95. Reynold Secher argues that the massacres from the conflict were not the inevitable result of fierce battle, but they were, and the laws were passed. This is law. The atheists passed law. They were premeditated, committed in cold blood, massive, 
and systematic, undertaken with the conscious and proclaimed will to destroy a well-defined region and to exterminate an entire people. Drawing upon previously unavailable historical sources, he's got the papers, he's got the receipts. More than 14% of the population was murdered in this conflict. His review of the social and political structures of the group represents, represents a dramatically different image of the people of the Vendée than the stereotype common among historians that are favorable to the French Revolution. So because the academy is so atheist, because the academy is so socialist, they are favorable to the French Revolution narrative, and they've hidden all of this data. So his thesis at the Sorbonne is entitled The Franco-French Genocide. And people were systematically exterminated by the order of Robespierre. He says here about 117,000 civilians, including women and children, were massacred in order that the race of the Vendeans be obliterated as a hindrance to the progress of the revolution. Now, other historians have argued. They said, no, you're lying. You're exaggerating the numbers. But then a bunch of new historians came along and said, actually, that number is probably too low by half. So at least double. I mean, some people have doubled it again. So, so this number, I've seen numbers as high as a quarter million that were murdered. Okay. Now let's have a look. Egalité, liberté, fraternité, ou la mort. So egality, liberty, fraternity, or death. That was actually the, the chant. So this is General Westerman. He said, the Vendee is no more. It died under our swords with its women and children. I've just buried them in the swamps and the woods of Savonay. I don't have any prisoners. I killed all of them. They murdered the prisoners. They kept no prisoners. This is an illegal war crime. And he says, pity is not revolutionary. Pity is not revolutionary. And these yeah. are the ancestors of atheism, socialism, black life. This is matter. the birth of modern atheism. Yes. And yet they'll have the audacity to turn their focus and attack the Old Testament for quote unquote genocide. Yes. Not that it is genocide. I'm not saying that's what the Old Testament teaches, but for wiping out women and children. I'm not saying that's what the Bible teaches. That's being taken out of context. But And yet their own fathers, their spiritual, and no one does anything about it. This has been buried and hidden. This guy brought it to light. He went through the archives. He found the books. He found the records. He found the letters. I'll continue. This is called the Vendée, a French genocide by Reynold Secher. He says here, Saint Just, he was one of the guys running this whole campaign, in a report to the Commission of Extraordinary Means dated August 14, 1793. In Meudon, they are tanning human skin. Skin coming from men has a consistency and quality superior to chamois. Chamois is the kind of cloth that you used to use to clean your car with, right? Soft cloth. That from women subjects is suppler, but has less strength. Right? In Cresson, on April 5, 1794, soldiers of General Cruzat burned 150 women to extract the fat from them. We made holes in the ground. We placed cauldrons to catch what fell. We had put iron bars above and set the women on top. Then above them was the fire. Two of my comrades were with me for this affair. I sent 10 casks of it or 10 barrels of it to Nantes. It was like embalming fluid. It was used in hospitals. They willfully burned 150 women to death to get their fat. And these women were burned alive. They were being burned alive? To my knowledge, yes. And this is atheists. This is rational. This is reasonable. This is atheists. Because they say, well, you know, an atheist did it. It wasn't done in the name of atheism. No, these were atheists making, they were saying, you either become an atheist or you die. And this is what happened. Hundreds of thousands of people died so yeah so understand this is this is this is death in the name of atheism this is the result of atheism this is what they hide this is what they're ashamed of you can see the french genocide okay the franco-french gen i just showed you this means of extermination i've just showed you that article that's in the french now atheism will end war as soon as they kill everyone who disagrees with them because atheists constantly tell me atheism will bring reason and will end war because religion causes wars. That is a lie. That's a flat out lie. So the president of the district expressed surprise in January 25, your soldiers indulge in debauchery and the horrors of which even cannibals are incapable. Everywhere we go, we bring fire and death. Neither age nor sex nor anything else is respected. Yesterday, we burned a village. They mean they killed everyone in the village by burning them. A volunteer killed three women with his bare hands. It is horrible, 
but the safety of the Republic urgently requires it. Every person we see, we shoot. The earth is littered with corpses. Rape and the most outrageous barbarity show up at every turn. Republican soldiers rape rebel women on stones piled on the sides of the main roads and then shoot and stab them when they leave their embraces. We have seen others carrying nursing babies on the point of a bayonet or a pike that had run through mother and child in a single stroke. Yes, and it gets worse. Baudesson, general manager of military supplies, said the road from Vier to Cholet was littered with corpses, with victims with their throats cut. General Avril rejoiced in having put down the rebels of saint Lefal to the number of 100. A number of them were roasted when all the houses in town were burned. There were poor girls, completely naked, hanging from tree branches, hands tied behind their backs after having been raped. A girl from La Chapelle was taken by torturers who raped her and then hung her head down from an oak. Each leg was attached separately to a branch of the tree and then separated from one another as far as possible. In that position, they split her body in two with a sword all the way to her head and then cut her in two. In the castle, in the castle of Lavrille, whatever, Frenchy, a, two girls tried, they tried to take two girls away as prisoners. One of them clung to her crippled mother's chair. A soldier, furious at being unable to make her let go, took his sword and cut off her hand. In other cases, women were thrown out of windows onto bayonets pointed in their direction. There were many more atrocities on that day. And there's a street where the corpses were piled up and from which flowed a stream of blood as far as Le Gagneux. And children in their cradles were pierced and still carried breathing on the points of bayonets. And in fact, there are reports, written reports, that state that they would have babies on bayonets and they would throw babies also off the balconies, catch them on bayonets, and then they would throw them from bayonet to bayonet. They would throw the babies and catch them again on the bayonets. Because they weren't atheists, they deserved to die. They were enemies of the state because they were not atheist. So, yeah. So, guys, does this put a different spin on atheism? Does this tell you how satanic, how immoral, how depraved, how violent, how disgusting atheism actually is when it has power? Sam, your thoughts so far? <clears throat> I want people to pay attention. This is actual history, historical facts. That's documented. So here's my, I just, and I don't want to belabor the point. Here's my statement to you, effeminate sissies out there. You who think you're doing Jesus a favor, and you think that you're being pious by being weak, effeminate queers. I'm sorry, I'm politically incorrect. It is this effeminate Christianity that's going to get us murdered. There's nothing in the Bible that says you cannot defend your life the life of your loved ones, the life of those who cannot defend for themselves, and the life and <clears throat> of your land. If this isn't proof, you need to be ready and armed and prepared to defend these young children like these girls. You see what they did to one girl. Not only did they rape her, but they split her in half. Or this other girl who was holding to the chair of her crippled mother and they cut off her hand and taking babies and flinging them on bayonets or throwing them off where there's a bayonet waiting for them to land on. If this doesn't encourage you to be prepared to defend your life, the life of your parents, the life of your children, your spouses, especially children who cannot protect themselves because you think Jesus wants you to be a pacifist, you are a disgrace, you are disgusting, and you are the trouble because your effeminate form of Christianity will bring destruction upon Christianity. May God preserve his church and make us not just militant spiritually, but militarily if we have to. So go ahead, brother. I just. Yeah. So do you understand? This is satanic. This is depraved. This is no different to what the communists did. This is no different to what Mr. Little Mustache did. This is the source of that. This is the philosophy that birthed that. Atheism was born in blood. It was born in irrationality. And they dare to call you irrational. They dare to call your beliefs this is atheist atrocity committed by atheists in the name of atheism who consciously wrote laws to murder Christians. Right. So I, I don't know why they don't teach this in school. They must have, maybe you missed school that day. Possibly you had a fever and stayed at home. 
You know, you could have been on the bus and got to school five minutes late when they covered this. You never know. So, yeah. So, but yes. Someone's asking about yeah. I just put his link to the YouTube channel in the description box and I pinned it. Go to his YouTube channel, subscribe, and there on the about page, he has links. And you have a patron or you said you had some other form, not patron. I have something else. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a patron, but maybe I should start one. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I appreciate the support. This, this research is time-consuming and it, I have to... Yes get materials and, and yeah and on top of that he's working a job so imagine if he did this full time so pray for his support pray for our support god will bless us go to his youtube channel you find the information there and he's got series on this on his channel but i'm going to have him do it here as well because i'm trying to get him more traffic more people he needs to go viral for the glory of christ so continue brother yeah so this is what they did this is what atheists did you need to confront them with this you seriously the atheists have no leg to stand on once you look at the religion of atheism at its history it is, it is sick. It is vile. Kendrick says, yeah, I'm currently in high school. Well, people in university have not heard of this, which is, which is frightening. Right? A surgeon named Thomas wrote, I've seen women and men burned. I've seen 150 soldiers mistreat and rape women, girls of 14 and 15, and then massacre them and toss from bayonet to bayonet, tender infants left next to their mothers stretched out on the ground. Now, yeah. So what can I say about that? Um, I just well, showed you the name of the book on this. I mean, hello. I mean, I just, old, I just showed you the name of the author, the name of the book. I just, I just showed you. Like, yeah. He wants to probably get it for his own personal library. So go back, rewatch this. But Lloyd, uh, the way you're describing these atrocities, and you've done a lot of study, and uh, yeah. I don't want to take much time, but atheists are even more barbaric and brutal in the way they torture, torture murder people than even Muslims, right? Um, I would think so because there is a certain there's a certain set of rules, morality. But don't forget, the atheists wanted to break all rules. They have no rules to to break they're all Muslims. norms. They're more they're worse animals than Muslims because Muslims have Do certain rules. Yeah. yeah. So atheism has no rules. The way they can torture you and kill. Yeah, I mean, do what thou wilt is the whole of the law. That that was effectively the the rallying. That that is the atheist moral. Sorry, that is the satanist moral stance. But we know that atheism and, and Satanism are perfectly compatible. They are, you know, atheism is satanic and Satanism is atheist, right? And obviously, at the end of the day, athe Satan does exist. Satan just, they just believe he doesn't for whatever reasons, but they are following the will of Satan because it's not the will of God, right? Now, let's have a look at the atheists and the nuns of Compen, right? So they speak of the, the witch, what's, what's it with the, the, the Salem witch trial? So let's have a look at the, the nun. The nun trials, the atheist nun trials. The reign of terror flooded the streets with innocent blood, claiming over 40,000 victims. Now, I don't know if this is rel relative just to Paris, because hundreds of thousands of people died. Okay, some, some numbers go up to half a million. I can vouch for 280, 290, 300,000 easily, right? People who died horrifically. On July 17, 1794, the martyrs of Compen were led to the guillotine in Paris. The government, the atheist, I should need to state this, the Freemason atheist government, whatever, the, the, you, you choose your ad adjectives, had ordered all converts, convents to disband. These nuns refused to split apart, and they kept their community together. They refused to shut down their convent. The revolutionary atheists judged the nuns as traitors for their defiance, and they condemned them to beheading. Each woman went bravely to the blade, while the other nuns sang a hymn, which wow. grew softer as their numbers dwindled, until at last, the final voice was silenced. The mother superior was the last to be beheaded and killed. The you're revolutionary gonna guilt... Sorry? No, sorry? sorry, Lord. You're going to make... I'm sorry, I had to interrupt. You're going to make me cry at the boldness. Honestly, I'm about to cry. So here you have... Oh, man. I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off, but do you see that? What? Nuns who love Jesus Christ more than their life, who went to the guillotine singing hymns, praising Jesus like the early church fathers, died boldly without recanting. These women showing more <clears throat> bravery than us men. Go ahead, brother. I just had to say that. No, you're right. That's fine. Interrupt any time. Um, that's actually good. I prefer to have a conversation than give a lecture. You know, I'd rather have an interaction and take questions and stuff. You know, I prefer feedback. I mean, I don't want you to just sit there and say nothing because then it's like, okay, but, you know. You're reason why i'm silent is because i'm astonished i'm blown away by your quotes that's why i'm not interacting because I'm, I'm you're blowing my mind if you see read the comments this stuff i've never heard 
And I'm in silence because I'm shocked at what I'm hearing. That's why I'm not saying much. I'm shocked, literally blown away at the filthy, evil, torturous, murderous <clears throat> actions of atheists that no one talks about. Yeah. Yeah. So the revolutionary government of France fell just 10 days after the nuns were murdered. And I should mention that the guillotine <laughs> is named after the Freemason and atheist <laughs> Joseph Ignaz Guillotin. He didn't invent it, but it is named after the Freemason. So if you want to, if you want to tell me Freemasonry is a religion of peace, I'll tell you to f off. Yeah, sorry, man. This upsets me. This makes me very, very angry uh, to know this and to have done all this reading and done all this work. No. Sam, your thoughts before I go on. Folks, you even see where the word guillotine came from. A man, a Freemason. Do you see that? The guy had never, I had no idea. It's named in honor of this filthy scum. It's insult to call him filth and scum because filth and scum is better than this low life bastard. Even low lives and bastards are better than him. So the guillotine comes after this man, Freemason. Do you see who would have known this because they're not teaching you this? What they're teaching you is Gay Pride Month, June, LGBT, LGBTQFU, like he said. So thank <laughs> you for sharing this. So I want you to do a series, and I pray God will bless you and your work and you prosper for his glory because we need to educate the masses because you see a lot of people are shocked. We didn't know this. I know. It's shocking to me as well. So I'll wind down at this point. I'll do the last few slides. So we're going to – so hopefully I've been tying atheism to Satanism, to – uh, to genocide, to socialism. We're going to be doing a lot of tying it to socialism. We're going to do a, we're going to spend a significant amount of time. And just so you know, spoiler, socialism was designed explicitly and specifically as an atheistic religion. Socialism is a religion. It is a theology. Please understand this. Atheism is a theology. These were designed specifically to replace Catholicism, right? The church in general, but Catholicism in specific. They wanted a religion that they could utilize for their own beliefs, a container to hold their own beliefs, but to strip everything of the divine from it. So now we're going to have a look at a man called Kropotkin. And this is his book, The Great French Revolution. Of course, it was great because lots of scholars, lots of atheists, lots of crazy people, lots of people love their violence, think it was awesome, you know, because this was the atheist wet dream, right? The French Revolution was the atheist wet dream. So, yeah, Peter Kropotkin. What we learn today from the study of the Great Revolution is that it was the source and origin of all the present communist, anarchist, and socialist conceptions. Uh, June is Pride Month. I'm sorry, Shula, but you, you need to you need to get with the new program. <laughs> Holy, you know what? If I could, oh, good grief! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So understand this man. Okay. So he tells us that the French revolution was the origin of all the present communist, anarchist, and socialist conceptions. In other words, these atheists had come up, they, they had implemented all of the, the, the fantasies of the communists, the anarchists, and the socialists. Kropotkin says, up till now, modern socialism has added absolutely nothing to the ideas that were circulating among the French people between 1789 and 1794. In fact, there are other statements where they say that basically all of these ideas that the communists, Marx and Lenin and Engels and Stalin and Lenin and all these guys came up with, these things were around before the French Revolution in the 1700s as part of the Enlightenment. So the Enlightenment birthed these ideas and the French Revolution implemented them. And so modern socialism added absolutely nothing to the ideas that were circulating in the French Revolution and which it was tried to put into practice in the year two of the Republic during the reign of terror. So these are socialist ideals. This was the socialist atheist revolution, the very first one in history. Anarcho-communism's main theorist is Peter Kropotkin. He was a child of the Enlightenment and the Scientific Revolution. He was a wealthy man, apparently, I believe, born into a wealthy family or from a noble family. He assumed that religion would be replaced by science and that the church as well as the state would be abolished. You see? 
Just like these atheists, these radical enlightenment thinkers wanted everything to be abolished, religion would be replaced by science and the church and the state would be abolished. The noblest man, the one really greatest of them all, was Prince Peter Kropotkin, a self-professed atheist. What a surprise. My gosh, I thought he'd be a Baptist. Wow. And a great man of science. And that's from Eli Robert Erskine, October 1941, the New York World Telegram newspaper. And the Soviet atheists, as you know, were all scientific atheists, and they also used the title militant atheists. Before I go on, Sam, over to you. So you, let me get this straight. I thought these guys were all Catholics and Orthodox. That's why the Protestants form and sought the help of the Ottoman, because these were nasty, evil Orthodox and Catholics. But you're telling me they're atheists? Are you sure you're not making up forged statements, sir? That sounds like a Catholic and Orthodox man. Um. <laughs> I know. Okay, Nothing to do yeah. with Islam. Nothing to do with Islam. Just remember that moniker. It's got nothing to do with atheism, Sam. It's got nothing to We want to prove during this series this has nothing to do with atheism. It's It might be standing next to atheism. It might be touching atheism. It might be part and parcel of atheism. Atheism might have its shoes in it. It might be standing neck deep, but it's nothing to do with atheism. Hopefully, we're establishing that. <laughs> now, just so by the way, Russian anarchist, zoologist, geographer, and revolutionist. He argued for a decentralized and cooperative anarchism that sought to replace the government with voluntary associations between people. Of course, the government would force voluntary associations because you couldn't have any of your own personal associations, now could you? He was a leading theorist of anarchist communism and advocate for mutual aid, free education. We will discover that free education was something that Marx desperately wanted and public ownership of the means of production. Oh, that sounds very Marxist right there. He wrote about, and he's an atheist, he wrote about the advancement of knowledge through anarchist thinking, drawing heavily upon Charles Darwin and Herbert Spencer. Herbert Spencer, right, he invented the term social Darwinism, right? And he also created the phrase survival of the fittest. Just, you know, that was Herbert Spencer. Darwin has blood in his hands. Charles Darwin, I need to do a talk on Charles Darwin and Marx and Charles Darwin and Hitler. Please. Man. Charles Darwin has serious blood on his hands. Yeah. Filthy dog. But we know that atheists love St. Charles Darwin because St. Charles Darwin created a creation myth without God. Actually, no, he created the origin of species. He did not do anything to do on the origin of life. But, but that's a small fact that, that they just ignore. <laughs> Was Charles Darwin a racist? Weren't all of these French revolutionary thinkers a racist? I mean, that's the, you're asking the wrong question. Were they all racist? The answer is yes. If that was your question. Wasn't Charles Darwin? Everybody, all of them, the whole lot of them were racist. Just, just deal with it. So maybe I should end here, Sam. I think I've done plenty. I'll, I'll end here. We are um, going to do as many series as he wants in this, and I hope he does do something on Darwin and show how Darwin influenced this filth, this garbage, this, this wicked evil system from the pit of hell and yet here's what's more heartbreaking you have christian philosophers who try to marry the theories of charles darwin with christianity to show they're compatible and yet these useful idiots do not see that this system was developed to destroy the christian worldview to destroy the christian church to destroy faith in the bible but now they're adopting it and trying to marry it with christianity and some of them are world-renowned, like William Lane Craig. May God rebuke and chasten them to repent of this filth, and the Lord save people from their influence. So just wanted to uh, highlight that. There was one point I wanted to see. You said you read something, free education. That's what I want to comment. Did you guys see yes. why he wanted free education, what they're doing to us in the public schools? They want your children to go to public schools Free education. Now you see the satanic agenda in the public schools, which I didn't know until you just quoted it. Free education, meaning you send them to these public schools that are financed by the government because we will then indoctrinate and brainwash them to make them zombies to follow, follow our satanic agenda, which is exactly what's happening in the public school system. And that's what he wanted, huh? Free education. Yeah, look, we'll, I'll, we'll talk more about this. I'll definitely get into more of that in the future because let me just find my place. 
they want that for those exactly those reasons. And I'll talk about how they infiltrated the schools uh, from their own writings. And we'll talk about this, how these atheists decided, to, how they took over the academy. And this is why they hide all of this information. Because if people realize just how filthy, how absolutely dirty, filthy atheism is in its history. And once it seizes power, how dirty and depraved it becomes, how violent and genocidal it becomes, people would obviously reject it. That's why atheists have to use sophistry to claim it's just a lack of belief so that you don't look any further beyond that. Just to let you know, guys, now I can see why I go into a lot of spiritual warfare when Lloyd is coming on. I'll leave with this because he's going to come back. You guys do not understand. I'm not exaggerating. Every time I'm about to do a show with him, something happens to me. I'm not exaggerating. You may think I'm lying because I said Thursdays is his day. I'm not lying to you that when Thursday comes around, something happens that distracts me where I can't bring him on. Now I'm seeing why. It's now clear as day to me that because God has blessed them with this information that is revolutionary and will expose and destroy the atheist Islamic agenda, glory to Jesus Christ for raising up people like him. May the Lord preserve him and <clears throat> fully <clears throat> enable him to do this. The things that happen to me, the things I get distracted, I go through emotional depression. I have to then suspend our <clears throat> stream for another day because he was supposed to be on last week. So, guys, if you really thank the Lord Jesus for servants like him, you need to be covering all of us, him, his family, me, in prayer. You need to go to his YouTube channel, subscribe. You need to <clears throat> ask the Lord to help you to help him get to the point where he can devote himself entirely to ministry because we're all in ministry, but he has to work as well until he gets to that level. And you need to share these links, his YouTube channel's material in this session. It's yours to upload spread it wide and far so that people can see how filthy and evil atheism is. It's in my estimation, I thought Islam was bad. What he just showed me, and this is the beginning, it makes Islam pale by comparison, I have to be honest with you. So support this man, pray for him, go to his YouTube channel, invite him to your platforms. He's willing to come. Make this man's material go viral for the glory of Jesus and pray he gets to the point where he can be fully funded. Pray for my health and safety and protection, because I'm not lying. Every time I bring this guy on, something happens. Am I exaggerating, Lloyd? How many times no. I've had to cancel because of Many problems. Happens? You've had problems. You know, I. what is strange is sometimes when I'm streaming, I'm having these crazy, weird technical issues that yes. I don't have. I set up and then suddenly, you know, things, it's weird. It's like, it's like the message, something doesn't want the message to, it, it is weird. That's why um, I'm devoted to bringing you on because the more attack I get because of you, that means Satan hates you, Satan is angry, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, will be glorified. That's why by the power of the blood of Jesus covering us, you're going to keep coming back. Yeah. So glory to God. Um, there was a question about James Lindsay and Marxism is more Gnostic. Marxism is also satanic. He claims atheism, but atheism is often a cover for Satanism. Atheism is often a cover to hide other activities. It's, it's, it's a vague... It's, it, it allows vagueness to, to hide things. It, it is Gnostic. It is also hermetic. It is also satanic. Um, we'll talk about all of these. Um, you know, it's, it's a really, I mean, look, you've got decades, centuries, potentially, of misinformation by academics. I'm not saying it's wrong what they've shown you, but it's, it's half the picture. They've left out the other half because they're in favor of these things. They're in favor of these people. So they've left out these elements. And once you add these facts in, the story changes completely. All of it's anti-Christian. And they, they're, they're in favor of being against Christianity. These academics are not your friend. Yeah. And, um, and, and someone so asked if I have a Patreon. Um, yeah, on my yeah. channel, in my description box, I, I have, you can just check my descriptions yes. um, for, for links, but I don't have a Patreon yet. Um, He'll get it. But there's other ways you can support him. Go to his channel, subscribe. And yes, uh, actually, just to confirm, William Albrecht gets bombarded and slammed every time he comes to do a session. The attack comes on him. With Lloyd, I, I get the attack. William, when he's about to do something with me, he gets attacked, slammed viciously. May the blood of Jesus Christ cover all of us, cover him. But when I'm about to bring so, him on, I go through hell. Something happens with me. So we need your prayers. And so you know where to find him. You too. Go to the About section. There's ways you can contribute until he gets a patron. Subscribe, support, watch, share. And again, you brethren, like Full Armor Apologetics, Invite him to your channels. We need to give him more of a platform. And in Jesus' name, he'll prosper for the glory of Christ as we remain humble and truly in love with Jesus Christ and not be politically correct. So, brother, 
If you have any final words, go ahead and you're coming back again. If the Lord wills, Thursday, same time. If the Lord wills, nothing happens. But we need your prayers. I'm not kidding. The warfare that I go through when I bring them on. Any final words, brother, until we do part two? God willing. Um, no, look, it's just <laughs> dealing with this is very traumatic. Actually, every time I do this, it is really traumatic to have to read this stuff. You know, yeah. it actually, I, I have to talk about it because to hold it inside, to be the first yeah. one, or the only one I know of that knows this, it is really traumatic to deal with. So I'm glad I can talk about this. But really, I mean, I do, I've been, I've been blessed. People have donated and I do appreciate that. It does make a difference. But I also want you to use this knowledge. Use, yeah. take it, uh, you know, um, Reynolds Secher, the, the Van D. Uh, just look up the, the genocide of the Vendi. That was something you can find the books. You will find them. I have an archive of all of this material is in my archive, right? Go check any description box of any of my videos. You'll find the links to my archive. Um, I will try and I'll drop everything in the chat later or in the comments for Sam to pin with all the, you know, some of the important references. Please use yeah. this. Talk to people about it. Share that. Learn it. Apply it. When you see atheists on social media, ask them these questions. Say, look, you use the name scientific atheist, so did Lenin, so did Marx, so did Stalin, so did Mao, so did all of these crazy psychopaths, these genocidal people. You use the same title and you are literally repeating the same propaganda. How are you different? Amen. You know, asking these Amen. questions, confront them. They will never answer you because it's embarrassing, but put it out there, ask them, how is your propaganda different to that of Hitler or Stalin? How are you different? You're saying the same things. Use this, use this. You, you have nothing to be ashamed of with Christianity. We admit to the faults of Christians who've done wrong, right? And we know people lie about it, but Christianity is good, is holy. Don't, don't, do not be ashamed. These Amen. people have everything to hide and they have everything to be ashamed of. Amen. Why do you think none of them is willing to talk to me? They don't like this information. They don't want this public. Sam, over to you. But thank you. Please use this. Really, just use this. To fight back. Yes. And I, I, I'm not saying in front of him, if I didn't think his work was great, I wouldn't invite him. My channel is your channel, Lloyd. Anytime you want to talk about something, you will have a platform. As long as God gives me health, safety, purity, and holiness, my channel is yours. But I go through a lot of warfare, but sometimes it's worse. But pray, the Lord protect. So Thursday is this day, unless, again, something happens. And brethren, just to let you know, in about two hours, I'm going live. So if you want a, something that is less hurtful to the mind, I'm going to be talking about <clears throat> the Trinity, Matt Slick and Arians, and how to use the best arguments for the Trinity. Because after you hear something like this about the slaughter on our brothers and sisters, the torture that Christians went through, the onslaught on the Catholic Church, what you need to do is then to be reminded of the beauty of Jesus, the goodness of Jesus, the holiness of Jesus. And one thing, let me say this. Jesus is real. He's alive. He's almighty. The blood of his martyrs, are not in vain. As one church writer said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. When Jesus sees his people being killed for his glory, the spirit then arises in majestic, sovereign, glorious power and moves mightily to bring revival, salvation, and to destroy the kingdom of darkness. Their blood is not in vain because Jesus our Lord is alive. He's almighty and he is their vindicator. So in two hours, we're going to talk about the beauty of Jesus, King Jesus, the Trinity, so that we can be refreshed by the word of our Lord and by the joy of the Spirit. So come join me in two hours. And brother, God willing, next week we'll be back, if the Lord wills. Thank you. Christ is risen. Thank you, everyone. God bless you guys. God bless.